there is something psychologically in her that wants to pick on the weak and vulnerable, that wants to pick on um, the mentally ill, the, the small business owner. Um, you know, on American Idol, she mom shamed that girl. Uh, you know, so I, I think that to me is, is the message I, I want to get out there to people that this is not somebody who should be on Peppa Pig. Like, this is not somebody who's a role model for your children. Quite the opposite. Um, you know, when she said, quote, I sold my soul to the devil, unquote, I'm pretty sure she meant it. Today, we're joined by Chart Westcott, which is a really cool, unique name. How are you doing today? Doing great. It's very pleasure to be on your show. Okay. You were recommended to me from the great Pete Turner, the Break It Down show. And Pete was telling me that it was actually your family who is in a dispute right now with Katy Perry in a story that actually sounds like reality TV. And I come to find out that well, your family may be actually involved in reality TV as well. Yeah, my my sister in law is, I would say, uh, to say that the family is um, is is perhaps an overstatement. But uh, she was a Real Housewife of Dallas, Cameron. No, my brother. Okay, now the dispute though is not about your brother or her. Although the, I, from what I understand, they are representing your father in court currently, or have been. We we all have. I mean, we were all there. Um, I was a witness at trial. My brother was a witness at trial. Uh, Cameron was there as as moral support, as was my mother. You know, the whole family really has kind of had to uh, deal with this as a whole. I mean, it's a very complicated and difficult thing to be going up against someone like this. Um, yeah, I mean, we can get into oh, a lot more specifics. On, uh, suffice it to say, you know, I, the line I kind of keep using is, I didn't have it on my lifetime bingo card to be in a, a high stakes litigation with pop star, a much one less one of, you know, her, her stature. Um, so it's, it's, it's been, um, it's been illuminating about how Hollywood works and about what the apparatus of enablement around someone like her is, is like. So the person in question we're speaking of is Katy Perry. And the story that you will share will maybe make people less sympathetic to her having a breakup by a text. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I won't comment on her, her personal life, but, um, you know, my personal experience with her has been pretty bad. I mean, and I'll, I'll just take it from the top. Um, what happened to my father? Why, why this all happened? So, Essentially, in 2015, um, my dad was diagnosed with Huntington's disease. So for the unfamiliar, Huntington's is a progressive, uh, genetic, degenerative neurological condition, um, meaning that it's her hereditary. Um, thankfully, is not long after my, my dad was diagnosed, my brother and I both got tested, and we do not have um, the genetic material is necessary to pass it on. So luckily I won't have it. My kids won't have it. Same with my brother and, and his descendants. So thank God for that. Is it uh, similar to say Lou Gehrig's disease along that line or you know, it's, it's, it's really, or it's, it's, it's a horrendous disease. Um, I'll, I'll describe it. Typically it impacts people when they're younger. And so it hits somebody in their like thirties and then they're dead by their mid to, to late forties or so. My dad had late onset Huntington's, which can happen. And so there's a number of things that characterize it. Uh, the most obvious physical symptom is this. It's, it's Korea, as it's known. Um, mm -hmm. And so my dad, I mean, it was very obvious starting in 2015 that he was having that. Um, and that was what led us to have him, you know, go get, you know, check out. And that was when he was, he was diagnosed with, with Huntington's. Um, by one of the premier experts in Huntington's in the whole world. It's a guy out of San Francisco. Um, and so that's the most obvious symptom. But the, the worst symptoms are uh, psychiatric. And it, so they include a lot of mood disorders and behaviors. Um, mm -hmm. You start acting out. You start um, you know, engaging in risky behavior. Uh, you start being very moody, agitated. 
um, you know, depression, psychosis, those are all, you know, and finally, most importantly for, for this case, dementia is an ultimate symptoms, symptom of Huntington's. So Huntington's dementia is a, is dementia, uh, no different than Alzheimer's dementia. It's dementia's dementia. So he ultimately ended up having dementia as a, a symptom. Um, but when and, did that, um, when was that discovered? It's hard to say exactly, right? I mean, and that's part of what the the trial is is about, I suppose, is what point exactly does someone, does it become clear that somebody has dementia? And that line and that, the diagnosis, you know, it's not exactly the same thing, right? But it I mean, wasn't 2015. It's sometime after that point. In 2015, we know we know he had Huntington starting in then. Sure. The ultimate result of Huntington's, it's not like, something happens to these people other than these symptoms progress and they die. Mm. Like, no, that's what happens in a hundred percent of cases. No one gets better from it. So, you know, there's no question he, he had Huntington's and that his Huntington's was progressing and, you know, not to bury the lead too much, cause I, I want to get your audience to kind of the meat of things, but the, you know, what happened as far as the, the relationship with Haiti was, you know, my father bought a house in June of 2020. His intention was that for to be his last and final house, the house he was going to die in. It's our medical experts, et cetera, in the area. Um, what, what, why that house? Why, why did he plan to be there? He, he loved that area, uh, Montecito. I mean, it's, it's a fantastic area. Uh, he, he had ties there, certainly both uh, my brother's wife got married there. We spend a lot of our time in the summers there. Um, he liked the area and, and he wanted a one story house. Most importantly, he knew he was kind of at that point where he needed one story. So this house was one he'd had his eye on for a long time. And finally, June, 2020, he's, he's able to, to buy it. And six weeks later, he undergoes spinal fusion, back surgery. So mm -hmm. if you're familiar with spinal fusion or you know, those are the orthopedic surgeons out there. It's a six hour surgery. I mean, it's the most serious form of back surgery that you can have, um, intense pain, absolutely intense pain. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, you're put on, um, obviously painkillers as a result. So the day after he gets out of that surgery, uh, a real estate agent, the one who had actually helped him buy the house, sends him a note saying, Hey, you know, we have somebody who wants to buy your house and one thing led to another and within about a week he was under contract to sell his house and this whole time he's in this post-surgery fatigue there's a, there's a medical term for it that i'm forgetting but he was in this post-surgery fatigue he had the underlying condition of huntington's disease and he was on you know the opiates tramadol all of the other medications that he takes for for huntington's including gabapentin and alzheimer's medications as well so he's on this cocktail of drugs, you know, shortly after this period of surgery. And so two days after the contract was formed, you know, his doctor had taken him down on the opiate dosage and he, you know, kind of comes out of the fog and says, wait a second, guys, like, you know, I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on here. You know, I'm 80 years old. Um, I was just came out of every heavy surgery. I was on pain medication. I have this underlying condition of Huntington's disease. You know, I didn't mean to, to sell the house. What and, alerted him to the sale and what was going on? What, what? Uh, I, I think it was just his regaining awareness. Um, but his, I, I really, it was also the, the real estate agent in question was wanted to help him go look at new houses now. Um, hmm. so a person who just made a commission selling him that helping him buy the house now making one selling it. Oh, I'm going to make another commission on, you know, buying that. So yeah, I wanted to clarify that because it, it, it did stick out to me. So. You're saying that there, there is one real estate agent who's involved in all these transactions. So when your dad originally bought the house, I think it was for like 11 million or something like that. The, this agent was the, um, buyer's agent, his agent yes. and got a commission of some kind, yes. um, which I imagine is a fair chunk of change on an $11 million purchase. And this same agent then either approached Carrie, Katy Perry's people or was approached gets, by her people. It gets even better. Her, Katy Perry's agent is in the same office. 
Okay. So they're workmates. Interesting. Um, or partners. I, I, what is their relationship? Are they coworkers or partners or what they're, they're, they're in the same agency. Um, okay. and you know, so you can imagine that, you know, they know that she's buying or, you know, mm -hmm. looking to buy. And, you know, my dad's in this surgery and he's in sort of a vulnerable state. Did the agent know your dad was in surgery and suffering this condition? I don't think she quite understood the, the reality um, mm -hmm. of what his condition was. I'll, I'll, I'll give her that, that I don't think she, she fully understood. Do I feel like she had some fiduciary duty that she breached in the way that she did, you know, conducted her affairs? Yeah, that's my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's a much longer story as to why we did not, uh, pursue action against her. Um, though the jury's not fully out on that, I, I will say. Um, but, you know, my dad at the time regarded her as a friend. You know, he was an 80 year old man living alone um, and isolated during COVID. And, you know, she's a very charming woman. So, question on that. Now, I saw a picture going around and appeared to be your father in a hospital bed with yeah. somebody on the bed sitting on the end with him. Who was that individual? Uh, I'd have to see the photo, but it, it was probably either uh, my brother's wife or. Our, uh, our, my, my, my nephew Cruz. Oh, babe. okay. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make sure, so has your dad ever interacted with Katy Perry or directly yeah. in any way? No. no. Okay. Yeah. He was, he was in the car when they visited the house one time and he was in so, and this was right after the surgery and he was in so much pain that he was, you know, saying like, hurry up, like have them leave you know, so I can get back in bed. Um, interesting, interesting. Now, I, I do want to go back just a little bit because, you know, we're all talking about your dad who has a horrible condition, is not of his right mind, essentially because of degenerative disease. Yeah. Just so we know, tell us who your dad is. I think he's Carl Westcott yeah. and he's an investor and he's known for some things. Can you he's, he's tell He's a fascinating me about guy. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, so he was originally from Vicksburg, Mississippi. Um, he grew up outside of Vicksburg, actually. He's, you know, family of five siblings. And, you know, he was the only boy. They uh, didn't have running water in their house, you know, no indoor plumbing. Um, as he said, you know, growing up, he thought people that had lawns were rich and that anybody who owned a car was remarkable. You know, I mean, that was just the times. And so... He goes from there, uh, you know, his formal education is a GED. Um, he enters the 101st Airborne at age 16 um, after his mother changed his date in the family Bible. And from there, he goes on to a, just a remarkable career in business. Um, he ended up owning a bunch of car dealerships. Did he uh, Vietnam? Did not go to Vietnam. He was right in between Korea and Vietnam. So he, hmm. he kind of lucked out in his, his timing in a sense. Um, he was one of the guys that participated in uh, the war games at the Hearst Castle, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Um, and then he also got to, um, during, uh, during uh, the Little Rock Nine, um, he was one of the 101st Airborne. So he hmm. was there at the integration of, of Little Rock Central High School. Um, so just a fascinating little footnote in, in history. He also got called up for uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it gives you some perspective on sort of the times he, he lived in. Um, but long story short, the guy has a ninth grade education and he ended up having, you know, multiple publicly traded companies. Uh, he created 1-800-Flowers, the, the moniker of the Oaks. That was never really a big moneymaker for us, ironically, but it's just how everybody kind of remembers him. Um, you know, and so he, he's been a great legacy, you know, for my family. And part of the frustration for us has been that now for the rest of like his life and like you know, the future of the internet, the first thing that's going to come up when you Google him is her. And, and, and that's, that's just terrible. Like that's, that's not fair to his legacy. I mean, you know, he won the Horatio Alger award and that's not something that you know, they just give out. I mean, it's hard to, to, to accomplish something like that and, you know, start from the very bottom and, and just claw your way all the way up to the top. And so that's what I want his legacy to be, not to be that he, he got in some nonsensical lawsuit that should have never happened. Um, you know, with the, with the narcissistic self-indulgent pop star. So. Okay. Now, one thing that did come up that I found fascinating or apparently was that this is not the first 
incident of Katy Perry and a property dispute. Um, when did you learn about, I guess they call it the nun house? The nun case, yeah. I, I, I honestly learned about it um, pretty early on um, once I got involved. So just to give you some like more timeline, you know, the, this all goes down in, in roughly July 2020. By um, October of 2021, my dad was permanently um, in a, a mental institution. Um, mm -hmm. At that point, you know, his disease had progressed so far that he could, it, it was just very clear he couldn't care for himself anymore. And so at that point, dad's lawyer on this case um, you know, got involved with me. And, and that was when I said, okay, because I, you know, I'll be blunt because of the Huntington's disease and a lot of, you know, the impacts of that and, you know, the behaviorally, like I wasn't that close with my dad during this, this kind of time period. I mean, both COVID and, you know, sort of his own behavioral choices as a result of Huntington's, you know, created some complications in the relationship. So I wasn't following the matter that closely. And frankly, I had a lot of my own stuff going on. Um, but that was when his lawyer and I kind of started to talk. And so, um, I asked him, I was like, man, this just seems so ridiculous, like over a house to spend millions of dollars in, in litigation for both sides. I mean, it just seems silly. Like, isn't there some way we can work this out with them? And, and he told me the conversation, um, that he first had with them when this, uh, you know, lawsuit kind of started. And he, he said to them, guys, like, is there some way we can settle this? You know, maybe whatever, a couple hundred grand, you guys just walk away. We're sorry for the inconvenience. And. And they said, no, we will accept nothing less than total capitulation. This is her lawyer's words. We will accept nothing less than total capitulation. And if you doubt Katy Perry's tenacity in litigation, look at the Nunn case. Yeah. So that is how her agents want her to be known to the outside world is we are so tenacious in litigation that we will kill nuns in court. Okay. Can we clarify <laughs> killing nuns in court? What went down with the nun case in, uh, in brief? I don't know the like ins and outs of it, well, um, okay. but suffice it to say that some nuns did not want to sell their convent to her and she persisted for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she, she just would not walk away from, from the opportunity. Uh, it's very similar to what has happened here. Um, if I could say it's really not just about, um, it's not just about properties. It's about her habit of targeting the weak and the vulnerable. Um, the nuns are a great example. My father's a great example. There's a fashion designer in Australia. Her name's also Katy Perry. Um, mm -hmm. And Katy Perry US is suing Katy Perry Australia simply because she has the same name in a trademark dispute. This woman has a fashion line in the Australian Katy Perry. And Katy Perry U.S. is suing her off her trademark infringement, even though her fashion line predates Katy Perry U.S. Hmm. Are, are the names spelled the same? No. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. It's, it's, it just shows you, like, this is a woman who absolutely wants what she wants, and she does not give a shit about the cost in human lives or other people's lives in terms of getting what she wants or how much money it's going to cost or what the fair or right or moral thing to do. Those aren't considerations I think that, that she makes. I mean, that's just my personal opinion, you know, between any other normal people, I think this situation could have been worked out a long time ago, um, but you're not dealing with a normal person. You're not dealing with normal lawyers, not dealing with normal agents. Um, you know, people that operate on behalf of Hollywood it's different. They know that they're part of a system and mm -hmm. they enable a lot of this selfish behavior on behalf of people like her. So I'm a big believer that, you know, it's kind of been eye opening for me that, you know, there's a lot of enablement that happens and happens in Hollywood uh, around this bad behavior. I'm curious about the house itself. The only thing that I've heard right now is that it's one story. Yeah. What is it? about the house that is so attractive. I know that your dad liked the one story and he planned to die there in a nice location, mm -hmm. but is there something of note of s historical yeah. significance or, or something of that kind that would cause Katy Perry to go scorched earth for the property? No, 
I mean, it's a great house. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of great houses in Montecito. In fact, just two months, three months after this, she bought another one um, in October of 2020, um, you know, for $14 million. And, you know, I've, I've been around it and she's spending, God, I don't know much, probably tens of millions of dollars renovating it right now. Um, so she doesn't need this house. She actually already owns three in, in uh, Santa Barbara County alone. And she owns a house in LA. So, I mean, like there's just no reason for her to be pursuing this specific course of action over this specific house. Um, there's no reason, you know, it's not rational. It's not what a normal person would do, but you're dealing with someone who has a habit of picking on the weak, picking on the vulnerable, um, it's part of her persona to, to not back down. So even when she's dealing with weak and vulnerable people, like the elderly, mentally ill, or, you know, small business owners, she doesn't care. Okay. Now to close out the nuns bit, um, from what I understand, she actually prevailed in that case and, yeah. um, did eventually get the property. Yeah. It's complicated. There was some other, um, kind of straw buyer person who got involved and I, I forget exactly the whole disposition of it, but just the fact like that you would be someone of her stature and say, oh yeah, being in litigation with nuns is worth it. Hmm. Now, this is going to be a hard question, but your dad is institutionalized now. And I imagine being degenerative, he's never going to be using the house. Well, what we've, what we've said from the beginning is we wanted to get him back into the house. Um, and I certainly, that's my ultimate goal is to get him back there. When he had the, the medical condition, when it we finally went into an institution was when he was, uh, you know, he came to Dallas in that, that time period, we kept him there because that's where my brother is. And that's where you know, our family was. We didn't know what we were dealing with. We knew it was Huntington's, mm -hmm. but what else? Because you know, he was of the age that it was like, okay, what else? And turns out there was a what else. So it, he also has vascular dementia. So, um, you know, which is a specific type of dementia. Um, and so, you know, and now he's, he's no longer really mobile. Um, but notwithstanding any of that, if we prevail, I absolutely intend to get him back in that house. Um, and I'm going to do it. And yes, there'll be a lot of logistical difficulties, but I am absolutely going to. Okay. So he, so he does have time left to where he could enjoy the house potentially. I mean, God, please like, you know, I don't know, but I hope so. Okay. What Maybe. is the case status from what I understand both sides have, have, um, closed their case or yeah. California civil procedure is very strange to me. <laughs> well, rested. I mean, sorry, rested yeah. their case, sir. So they're both sides are done. Um, Closing arguments are on November 3rd. Um, so that's, that's coming up and, uh, you know, members of the family will be there. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, you know, the judge said he may rule that day or he may, um, you know, rule several weeks later. Um, so we, we don't know when we'll have an answer and, and, you know, even if we prevail, given what she did in Australia, given what she seems to do all the time, she's very litigious, fully expect her to appeal. Um, I will say, I think this judge has been fantastic. I think he's been very fair. Um, us personally, like, you know, we will, we'll accept, you know, the ruling of this judge because I think he, it's been very good. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I believe in the U S judicial system. I believe in the, um, you know, the system of, of justice that we have. Uh, so, you know, hopefully we get the outcome we're, we're looking for, but I certainly understand it. You know, litigations is very unpredictable. Um, you know, it's very, very unpredictable. So, um, I, 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 there is one other thing I'll add the manner in which they chose to conduct, um, their, their trial strategy and some of the things that they said about our family, um, were just hateful and un unnecessary. Uh, for example, they accused my brother and I of quote, uh, this is a, this is a question posed to my brother on cross-examination. Isn't it true that you and your brother just made up this whole Huntington's things for this trial? Hmm. Like, yeah, we got him diagnosed by one of the world's best experts in 2015. Also, we could, you know, bamboozle you guys 
you know, eight years later in this trial. It's just a ridiculous insinuation. And they are, they were very happy to lie for lawyers. Very, very happy to lie. Like it's you know, nothing for them to lie. They, they lied in their opening statement. Um, you know, they lied in stuff they said about things I've said in, in the, uh, in testimony, they've lied about that in the, in the press. Um, so I'm very happy to say Greenberg Trowling, one of the largest law firms in the world, they all are a bunch of liars. And you know, the lawyers you have working for you, a lot of them are liars and I'm sorry, but I, I, as an attorney myself, like it was really disheartening to see the way that these guys conducted, um, this trial and, and it didn't have to be that way. Oh, and they, you know, I won't say too much, but if you get the point that I'm, it, it does not reflect well on her, not just the litigation, but the manner in which she has allowed the litigation to be pursued, the uncouthness with which she has done that to me is, is very distasteful and it was not necessary. How has this been represented in the media? Has, has the media been sympathetic towards your father or are they more in line with the famous pop star? I mean, I think anytime you're dealing with someone like her, uh, they're going to paint her as the villain for good reason. Um, she is, that's not, you know, unclear here. Um, and, and she's doing a bad thing. So I think the media, I mean, and I think they've gotten it right for the most part. Um, there's sort of a like, why and how? And really, again, is this a pattern of behavior? Yeah. Like, and so the, I'm glad that they get it because it's very frustrating, I think, for me to see the hypocrisy of a person who, you know, her social media or Twitter handle, I think, is love is the key that unlocks every door. Like, lady, you show no empathy, no compassion, no love in the way you conduct your affairs. And the hypocrisy is just insane. Thing. And I'm glad that the media has, has picked up on, on this story. And, and, and thank you, by the way, for, for having me on. Of course, man. From my understanding, it's not only the media, though. It seems like politicians are getting involved. I hear rumors of a Katy Perry Act. Can you yeah. discuss that? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, some, some lawmakers have, have thought about this and, um, you know, apparently think that uh, a right of rescission makes sense for people over a certain age. And, you know, frankly, it makes sense to me. It would have saved my dad, um, given the situation he was in, um, uh, you know, if he'd had this ability to rescind the contract after, you know, a certain period of time. Um, and, and given what we know about Alzheimer's and rates of dementia, you know, the word like vulnerable gets tossed around in our society a lot these days, but, uh, you know, somebody 75 years or older at seven, age 75, you have 15% chance of having dementia by age 80, it's 20%. This is an objective portion of the population that, you know, is truly has, has some vulnerability here. And so given that also they're, you know, for most people that age, the largest asset they own is their home. Um, so it makes sense to have some protections around transfers for elderly people with regards to their house. Um, and I think legislators around the country have, have thought about this and see there seems to be some interest. So is this kind of um, like legislating a potential cooling off period? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, um, the, the way I understand it is if you're 75 years or older um, and you have created a contract to sell your personal residence, um, from the point of that creation, that, the contract execution, a formation, I guess you'd say, there's a 72 hour window in which either party to that contract could, could rescind it, assuming one person to the contracts over the age of 75. So, you know, real estate's already a regular regulated industry, um, heavily. So this sort of makes sense, uh, as, as something that would just shift the burden away from frankly, you know, realtors, it would take some liability off of them, uh, you know, not to have to worry so much about if their client is, is sound mine or not. And, and, and so I, I think there's a lot of ways in which it makes things easier on, on, on folks and, and certainly gives seniors, you know, a little extra time. Um, you know, my dad was living alone. It's a very common situation these days, um, you know, with gray divorce and, um, and people, one spouse predeceasing the other kids, maybe living at, you know, not in the same area code. And, 
And then, uh, you know, there's just a lot of horror stories if you start digging around in terms of, um, older folks and, and their homes. Makes sense. Now, I always like to close out with one final question and that's essentially what is the question that I should have asked you, but I did not? Oh man, that's always a tough one. <laughs> um, or it can be, what is the one message you want to get out? And nobody is asking you this question. I mean, for me, the, the, the thing always, why, why, why am I here? Why did this happen? You know, why, why did she have to take us down this path? And, and I struggle with it constantly. And I, you know, again, this is my personal opinion. There is something psychologically in her that wants to pick on the weak and vulnerable, that wants to pick on, um, the mentally ill, the, the small business owner, um, you know, on American Idol, she mom shamed that girl. Uh, you know, so I, I think that to me is, is the message I, I want to get out there to people that this is not somebody who should be on Peppa Pig. Like, this is not somebody who's a role model for your children. Quite the opposite. Um, you know, when she said, quote, I sold my soul to the devil, unquote, I'm pretty sure she meant it. Wow. Well, chart, I wish you luck. I hope that, I hope in the end, some sort of justice prevails for everybody involved. I can only imagine the staggering amounts of money and resources and time that have gone I mean, into you know, something that's horrible. It's yeah. like when we're, we should be spending time with our dad and time we're, instead we're dealing with this. And every time one of her songs comes on the radio, like takes me back to this. It sucks me. Well, well hopefully things improve very soon. And thank you so much, man. Thanks, Eric.